Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about dismissive avoidance and the intimacy slowdown. So this is actually based off of a question I had from inside the Personal Development School from one of our members. Um, and we do have a discount available for memberships right now. There's a link in the description box below if you want to check that out. Um, and this member said, I've basically been in a relationship for about a year with a dismissive avoidance. And um, over that course of time, they went from being very interested in sex to sort of like disinterested in sex. And it's hard to not take this personally. And I say this is a question from a specific member inside PDS, but honestly, this is a question I get asked nonstop. It's on YouTube video comments. It literally gets emailed to our info at personal development school email inbox all the time, um, all kinds of places. It's, it's popping up in the school and webinars. We do everything. So I felt like it was probably really important to address this. Now, I have done a further length video about the relationship dismissive avoidance has to intimacy as a whole, but so you can check that out and it'll, um, it's literally called the dismissive avoidance and intimacy. But um, what I wanna address is like when it goes from one end of the spectrum to the other. So first and foremost, is this something that is common? 100%. Is this something that every dismissive avoidant um, will basically have happened to them over the course of a relationship? The vast majority of them, yes, unless they are healing and doing the work. And what's really interesting about this topic is the fact that literally there is a major relationship between somebody's emotional connection to themselves and other people and their actual physical or intimate connection with themselves and another person. So what often happens, and I always say this in the YouTube videos about DAs, it's like their feelings minus their fears. And we talk a lot as well about the six stages of a relationship in here. So we've got the dating phase, honeymoon phase, power struggle, um, the security phase or stability phase, um, commitment phase and bliss phase. And a, a relationship has literally a life cycle. And you can think of the bliss phase as sort of being like the honeymoon phase, but with more unconditional love because we've moved through the rites of passage to like learn how to see each other differently, learn about each other's fears and wounds, learn to accept one another's imperfections. Now, when we talk just about the dating phase of a relationship and the honeymoon phase, there are a lot, a lot less fears showing up in that phase of a relationship, especially the dating phase. So the dating phase is sort of like you're getting to know somebody. There isn't a lot of commitment a lot of the time. Um, there is sort of more um, be on your best behavior, like the mask is on sort of thing. And for a dismissal avoidance, those are usually not times in a relationship that are highly triggering of their fears. So you can think of the dismissal avoidance during that phase as being mostly in their feelings and developing those feelings over time. There will still be some fears and, and they definitely have programs that determine how they navigate interaction and connection, but they're not going to be really deeply in their fears. Then as there, there requires more vulnerability in the relationship, more closeness more opening up, more commitment, more time together, all of those things are gonna trigger the fears all of a sudden. And this means fear of you know vulnerability equals I am unsafe. Fear of you'll see me if I open up and you'll discover something's wrong with me. And that shame wound that a lot of dismissive avoidance carry. Fear of you know all sorts of these different things. And so this is why it's so important to recognize that unless those fears are dealt with, they are going to have an impact on the way that a dismissive avoidant feels their feelings. And this happens more so for DAs than any other attachment style. And then it spills directly into their intimate connection. Does it for all of them? Pretty much. Like I'm sure there are exceptions out there. I personally haven't seen any. Um, and, and I have seen couples go through relationships sort of cool off for a little while, not be as connected, and then sort of go through cycles where then some of the physical intimacy comes back, these sorts of things happen. But unless the dismissal avoidance is literally doing the work, reprogramming their beliefs to say, vulnerability is safe, intimacy is safe. You know, I am good enough. I am worthy of, of closeness, connection. It is safe to connect. I'm free when I'm in a relationship. I'm not trapped. Unless they're actually doing like these type of reprogramming um, type work, on their subconscious mind, then over time, what's gonna start happening, and this is what I want you to really deeply understand, 
is the dismissible avoidance starts, all of our brains are an association making machine. So what starts happening is the dismissible avoidance starts associating the person they are loving or caring for in a relationship with, with negative feelings because the brain goes, oh my gosh, these, these fears are coming up and they're coming from the person I'm in a relationship with. They're coming from the relationship. And the brain starts associating the person in the relationship with being the cause of the fear. What's actually happening that the person can't necessarily recognize, at least at a subconscious level for sure, um, is that it's not the person being the reason they don't feel good. It's, it's, it could be, of course, if the person's like rude or critical or unhealthy, but what's happening is the intimacy with the person is triggering the unresolved wounds in the dismissible avoidant, which are now coming to the surface. And then the, the subconscious mind of the dismissible avoidant starts associating this person with being somebody wounding or somebody who's causing the pain as opposed to a catalyst for pain and painful beliefs that already exist within the, the dismissible avoidant. And now they want to protect themselves from that person. And how do you think that looks? They protect themselves by creating space. And that applies as well to physical intimacy. So this is a big part of the reason we see this. I have so many questions about this. Literally the solution for this is to start doing reprogramming work on core wounds, on your beliefs about closeness, intimacy, all these different things. And if you're the partner of a dismissive avoidant, have these conversations, bring it up, talk about it. You know, see, see what you can bring up and, and just bring to the surface so that the person can see outside the perspective. Um, if you're in a longer term relationship and you have more openness in with that person, you could even show them this video. Um, but just be careful because they do have a shame wound. And so sometimes if it's something is too direct, it could trigger that core wound, something's wrong with me. So again, please be a good judge of that in your relationship dynamic. But I hope this all makes sense. Um, I think it's a really important topic. Thank you so much for your questions. Thanks for being here. Let me know any comments you have um, below about your experience with intimacy with as the attachment style that you are, some of the pain points, fears, triggers, and I can always do a deep dive and make some more videos about all that stuff. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.